The Late Night News is proudly brought to you by the All Turbo 95 Series. All new for 2000, one of TV's longest running dramas now into its 10th year. New crimes, new cases, and a brand new guy. Law and Order, this season premiere, 8.30 Monday on 10. This program brought to you by Toshiba, the biggest and brightest range of rear projection television, and Ansat Australia. In sports tonight, an all-star Tuesday. Pete Sampras at the Aussie Open. Greg Norman at the Heineken Classic. Sir Garfield Sobers and King Kieran, the big names on sports tonight. Hello, I'm Matthew White. Welcome to sports tonight. Along with the big names, we've got the big plays as well. Mark Bosnich can play soccer. He's not bad at dress up either. Maybe that should be dressed down. English Premier League later. Sydney Swan skipper Paul Kelly is planning to play on despite an injury that's not only threatening his season, but his entire career. And the British American racing team has played its ace, teaming up with Honda and Jacques Villeneuve for a powerful new F1 team. We've got a special report from London. But first to Melbourne Park, where the shootout we've been waiting for is now ready to fire. Tonight, Pete Sampras booked a spot in the semi-finals. Already waiting for him, Andre Agassi. Surviving a few scares on the road to the quarter-finals, Pete Sampras was pumped up and primed for an express ticket to the semis. Oh, yeah, that's athleticism there. But his opponent, fellow American Chris Woodruff, also planned a trip to the next round, issuing Sampras an early warning. Oh, and he pounced on that. And he's broken Sampras. The six times Wimbledon champ then took a different tact, running Woodruff around court, a test of body and of mind. Yeah, clever play, Sampras. Sampras holding on in a thrilling high standard first set 7 5. Oh, now he's in trouble. The Sampras machine has just right, gone up another gear. It was the highest gear Sampras had found all tournament. Woodruff's pressure bringing out his best. Oh, magnificent tennis. All was not right, though Sampras calling for the trainer. His mystery illness not affecting his movement or his magic. Oh, yes. <laughs> another perfect placement, another set to Sampras. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And second set to Sampras. The master steamrolling to victory in straight sets. Sampras's stunning form, the perfect preview to a titanic test, Andre Agassi. He's playing great, there's no question. Uh, he's pretty much breached through the tournament. Uh, he's a great player, and I'm going to play at my best to beat him. Also tonight, Lindsay Davenport cruised into the semi-finals with a straight sets win over Julie Hallard Decuji of France. Earlier today, Jennifer Capriati showed she was back as a force in women's tennis. She stormed into the semi-finals, breaking Ie Sugiyama's opening serve and raced through the first set, six games to love. Too good, too heavy. A strained abdominal muscle that forced Capriati from the court, Sugiyama's only respite. The second set went the same way as Capriati reeled off ten the games in a row continues. before Sugiyama finally got on the board. Ah! She's on the scoreboard, Sugiyama, she breaks Capriati's serve. Capriati closing out the match in convincing style. Game set and match. In the men's quarter-final, Andre Agassi picked up an early break against Moroccan Hisham Marazi. While Arazi went for every shot, Agassi opted for touch, serving out the first set. So Hisham Marazi loses his first set of the tournament so far. It was the same story in the second. Agassi just too consistent for Arazi's flamboyance. So nothing but exasperation for Arazi. Arazi did win on the entertainment front, but Andre made sure he wasn't outdone. Agassi running out an easy straight sets winner. Now to cricket and with some of the best batsmen in the world in their side, India has promised much but delivered little this summer. Well tonight in Adelaide the Indians finally got it together. 
Needing to win all four of its remaining matches in the one-day competition, India made a dashing start. Captain Sachin Tendulkar and fellow opener Saurav Ganguly blazed away from the outset, scoring at almost six runs and over. Nicked away down to third man, that'll be four as well. That is a beautiful shot from Tendulkar. All-rounder Razak made the vital breakthrough for Pakistan. The Indian skipper on his way for 41. He just knocked him over again. Tendulkar's dismissal slowed the run rate for a while, but Ganguly steered the total past 100 and his score beyond 50. Uh, 50 for sure of Ganguly. Dravid offered some support but fell victim to an afridi inzamam combination in a search for quick runs. Shoaib Akhtar also combining with Inzamam to dismiss Kanikta. But Ganguly remained solid at the other end, rewarded for his hard work with a century. His 11th one day international 100. Singh provided some big hitting when he arrived at the crease, helping the total move into the 200s. But Ganguly wasn't to be outdone, also lifting the tempo on his way to a score of 141. Chasing 268 for victory, Pakistan made a shaky start, both openers out with just 21 runs on the scoreboard. Inzamam had no luck, looking for the short boundary square of the wicket, Kanikdar producing a circus trick to send him on his way. Ijaz managed to carve out a half century, but Pakistan continued to fall behind as more wickets fell and the required run rate ballooned above six. Kumblay doing the damage, snaring Yohana, Ijaz and Moen. Quick shout, it's got to be close, he's given it! A change of tactic from Azam Mahmood quickly altered Pakistan's position, his burly hitting putting them right back in the contest. Mahmood scoring 50 from just 34 balls, the fastest this summer. He didn't have enough support, however, his partners fell by the wayside and Pakistan couldn't be rescued. After fighting off a bad case of cramp, Mahmood holed out, giving India victory and keeping them in the finals race. And here's the board, Mahmood giving the Indians a real scare late. Leg spinner Anil Kumble, the best of the bowlers there for India. Well, despite an impressive workout today, Australian Vice-Captain Shane Warne will miss tomorrow's limited overs international against India. The national selectors want Warne to rest for one more game. Shane Warne stretched well enough this morning, bowled impressively with plenty of zip, and his form with the bat wasn't bad either. But despite the faultless session, he'll watch tomorrow's day-nighter against India from the sidelines. No, we're going to go that way about a week ago, so that, that's been sort of the long-term plan. He wants to play tomorrow, but the physio wants to give him a few more days off, and I think that's pretty wise. Warren strained a side muscle two weeks ago, but War says he'll resume in Perth on Sunday. And that's not good news for Stuart McGill. Australia's other leg spinner is almost certain to play in Adelaide, but even if he puts in a man-of-the-match performance, the selectors, it seems, have decided that if both are fit, Warren will always get the nod. So while there'll be no rotating the spinners, the all-rounders can expect to get dizzy. I'd say the all-rounders might rotate. Um, looking to give Ian Harvey a game tomorrow. So that means someone's got to miss out who's played really good cricket, which is a tough decision. Fast bowler Glenn McGrath was competitive at training today and should return for tomorrow's game. The headaches continue for selectors who have been busy all year juggling what the skipper believes is the best one-day squad he's been involved with. Some big news in cycling tonight. Adelaide track cyclist and Commonwealth Games gold medalist Tim Lyons will miss the Olympic Games after testing positive to an elevated testosterone level. He's been banned for five years. Stay with us after the break. Greg Norman in Perth for the Heineken Classic. The time now is back for me to spend time on the golf course. Um, the other day I spent 10 hours hitting golf balls. He's back, his shoulder's fine, and there's no problem with the hunger. The Great White Shark is next on Sports Tonight. Plus, Paul Kelly down, but definitely not out. And the fancy new F1 team with a car designed by an Aussie. Lee Diffie reports from London after this. What if the man who shares your bed is sharing you with another? I believed every word you said! What if your greatest fear... I think that I'm being stalked. ...is the fear of love? Hi, this is Matt. And what if the greatest crime of all... I'm just trying to figure you out. ...is not listening to your heart? You're involved in a very dangerous game. Christy Wright has a bright new cast in a brand new Australian drama. 
Unlock the secrets that lie waiting above the law. Coming soon to 10. I'm fully qualified. I'm fully qualified. I've worked my way up to this for 15 years. I've worked my way up to this for 15 years. I could bring a lot to it. I company. could bring a lot to it. I'm company. ready for this. I'm ready for this. I logged on at Career One, found the job, and got the job. I didn't. Celebrate the century's first Australian Day with super cheap auto for three whole days. Please, that's quick, clean that grease and kill a million flies with export. $1.69 each. A 24-piece banner set for $14.99. You beauty! Forget the love for Barricade steering wheel lock $19.99. That'll keep the blinders out. Here's an Aussie Day special six-piece screwdriver set for just $2.99. And our amazing super fit sheepskins are an amazing 89 bucks a pair. Get it all at the Aussie Day three-day sale. Where? Super cheap auto. You betcha! Papermate is advancing writing technology to improve the free flow of ideas. Introducing Papermate Gel Roller. Its exclusive gel glide ink system and spring-loaded point make writing uniquely smooth. Papermate! Kalua, drink the rhythm. feels so smooth. Everybody said it'd work, but you've got to prove it yourself. It's so rich. No wonder the wrinkles stay away. Now that wonderful eye cream. Crow's feet, be gone. My work demands I look as good as I can, so I'm fussy about my nightly routine using Dr Lewin's private formula with its famous anti-aging qualities. Dr Lewin's private formula. It really works for me. It'll work for you too. With a stroke of luck, you could win this house and land, the resort, by Webb and Brown Neves at the fabulous Vines Resort in WA. Valued at over $400,000. Call 1902 555 Answer the question on your screen and watch the Heineken Classic on 10. If a hole-in-one is scored on the Burswood Casino 16 from the Saturday and Sunday of play, you could win this fantastic home. Or win a week at the Novotel Vines Resort Flying Quarters. You could be the proud owner of this home at the Vines Resort. Welcome back. Before we move on, a quick correction for you. Tim Lyons been banned for two years. We said five should have been two years. Well, the shoulder problem that slowed down Greg Norman certainly hasn't dented his confidence. Back to play more tournaments in Australia than he has in a long time, the Shark reckons he's still hungry for success. Hungry enough to declare that a winning run could start at the Heineken Classic in Perth. The time now is back for me to spend time on the golf course. Ominous words for the world's professionals, a healthy Greg Norman ready to put business interests on the back burner and concentrate on his game. The first time in my life, I think, that I've actually got to, a, I'm in a position where I can go back and do what I truly love to do and that's play. Australia's greatest golfer forecasting success for the country's up and coming stars. It's the first time probably in 20 years that we've seen a good fresh breed of young amateurs ready to come forth. Norman says Aaron Badley reminds him of himself as a young golfer. He's helping the Australian Open winner, even to the extent of organising a practice round at Augusta. I asked him who he'd like to play with, and he mentioned a few names. He mentioned David Duvall, he mentioned Tiger Woods, Nick Price. <laughs> I said, OK, who else? He said, Jack Nicholas. I said, well, OK, I'll just dial them all up and get them going. <laughs> Today named an Olympic torchbearer, Norman would like the sport to be included in the Games. To me, there's no question it should be involved with it. Sydney captain Paul Kelly could miss the entire 2000 AFL season after his fractured knee failed to heal. The 1995 Brownlow medalist has just started an ultrasound course and at best will be out for three months. Kelly isn't contemplating early retirement, despite the knowledge that he'll miss the whole season if he needs just further the surgery. It needs to, to get right. Um, I feel I've like got another, you know, well, several seasons of footy left in me. Motor racing giant Honda has returned to the Formula One grid. Today in London, the Japanese manufacturer joined F1's newest team, British American Racing, in a car designed by an Aussie. It was the traditional spare no expense Formula One launch heralding Honda's return to motorsports elite category after an eight-year absence. 
1999 was a debut season British American Racing would rather forget. After ruffling the feathers of the establishment with their controversial twin tobacco sponsorship and big talk of success, the team failed to score a single championship point. But Honda believes they have the answer to BAR's problems. Uh, horsepower. And why has Honda come back into Formula One? Uh, we love racing. But the drivers don't share the initial enthusiasm of the manufacturer. The car is not fast enough yet, but at least we can do laps and we can work on it. With six consecutive constructors and five drivers world championships, Honda has the runs on the board. I cannot do anything differently. All I can do is keep doing what I was doing last year and try hard. But already the base engine is very strong, uh, so I just can't wait to, to, uh, to try the evolution. British American Racing's second generation car is the brainchild of Australian Malcolm Osler. Things can only go up from where we were last year and uh, things are looking very positive at the moment and the team has got a very good spirit. We, uh, in spite of the hard times we had last year, but only like two or three people wandered off. The BAR launch here in London today coincides with the news that Williams will run 20 year old British rookie Jensen Button in the new BMW powered machine. Button replaces former Champ Car star Alex Zanardi, who split from the team after a disastrous 1999. An upset in the Group 1 Australia Stakes at Mooney Valley tonight with the $10 million cult. Redoute's choice beaten by flying filly Miss Penny Money. After travelling sweetly, she accelerated like a real top liner in the straight. Paint the leaders, Reduce Choice is hard ridden. He has to dig. Miss Penny Money comes around him. Anson Krizov got the split in the centre. Miss Penny Money dashed straight past Reduce Choice. So did St. Krizov. But the flying filly, Miss Penny Money, over two now. St. Krizov and Reduce Choice. And Miss Penny Money, is she a star? Miss Penny Money by two, Reduce Choice. St. Krizov a half length away third, ran the race of his life. Well, the West Indies have produced many great cricketers. Arguably, the greatest has been Sir Garfield Sobers. Sir Garfield is in Australia right now, and I spoke with him earlier this evening. Sir Garfield, thanks so much for your time on Sports Tonight. If we can start by getting your opinion on the current Australian cricket team. Seven straight test victories. Steve Waugh's men are really firing. What's your opinion of them? Well, I think they're, they're a fine team, and I think that this is something that Australia has started a way back, some 10, 12 years ago when they started to rebuild and they did a tremendous job in doing so and today they have about what 24 25 or even more players that they can pick an 11 from and would be strong enough to play against any other team in the world today now just a few years ago we would have been saying that about the west indian cricket team but times have changed now haven't they yes well the west indies team probably should have started rebuilding some nine years ago but unfortunately, they thought they could still win with the older players. And if they had done like Australia, I am sure that by now they'll be on their way back to being a good team. Was that the problem, you think, with the West Indies, the rebuilding program? But also, Australia has an amazing program for the youngsters coming through the cricket academies. Do the West Indies have that? Well, there is a program that's going on in the West Indies now. Um, but they haven't had one for a long time. Brian Lara hasn't been in the best form. How important is it for him to get back to that form and encourage the youngsters in West Indies to get into the game? Yes, well, you see, Brian, um, unfortunately, Brian hasn't been as, as consistent as he as one thought he would be because um, once Brian is doing well, even with the, monk, the, the kind of players that we have in the West Indies team at the present moment, it still seems that we can get by on, 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 on Brian's strength. But with Brian failing and um, the youngster.